Greyhound View this week, we head to Tralee to talk with trainer Cordrick Regan. Then on to the Kingdom Stadium for all the action from their hospital benefit night. Plus the quarterfinals of the sporting press, Irish Oaks from Shelburne Park. We also pay a visit to last year's Oaks winner, Life's Beauty, with her new arrivals. But first, it's the final of the Murphy's Irish Stout 550 from York. Murphy's Irish Stout Stake came to its conclusion last Friday evening at Yore, offering a prize of €5,000 plus trophy to the winner. Again this week, the bookies were smiling as luck was not with the favourite. Mal Keevney takes us through the lineup. First into picture, we have Dilemma D for the Weird Fish Syndicate here in Cork, trained for them by John Linehan, a son of Top Honcho and Faultless Quest. Next, it's Canary Captain, jointly owned in Killarney by Jim Healy and Carl Williams. Trainer Paul Hennessy, a son of He Knows and Mingler's Magic, third last weekend, but should improve on that. In the white jacket, Rovers Estate for Ned Fitzgerald and his Barry's Bar Syndicate of Rath Cormac, a son of Tom's the Best and Lock Team Velvet, a surprise winner last weekend. He beat Weatherman on the line in 29 41. A winner also last weekend and from Trav 4 is Heartlands Point, 29 25 the time last weekend. It's owned in Cove by John O'Connell and trained for him by John Kiley. Hartland's Point is the son of Tom's Best and Huggies Cry. Expect a big run here tonight from Baltimore Bay for Catherine Field and trainer Christy O'Callaghan. It's the son of Frisbee Flashing and Queen Maeve. And finally to our favourite, that's Weatherman for Pat Jones and Clare. The trainer is Mark Robertson. Beaten on the line last weekend by Rovers Estate but will be there or thereabouts come the finishing line this time around. Weatherman, our favourite, is a son of Velvet Tom and Haywood Melody. In six, Weatherman will be hoping for a quick return to winning ways here in this final. Here arrives towards traps, he's poorly away. Down the centre, Heartlands Point and Canary Captain. Very close between this pair, the Ben Delimity, all take attention. Huge trouble in behind and Baltimore Bay is out of the race. But up front, it's Canary Captain now and Heartlands Point battling it out. And going in front, it's Canary Captain. Heartlands Point still well in contention. Rovers Estate is back in third. Can it, Delimity is uh, fourth, but off the final turn, the battle is on up front, Canary captain, Canary captain up towards the line, Heartlands point second, Rovers Estate takes third. Confirmation now of the result of the final of the Murphy's Irish Stout Stakes 2003. Victory for Canary captain, second Heartlands point and third Rovers Estate. The winning time 28-81. Weatherman was out of it right from the start when he failed to break from box six. Out very well, Canary Captain and Heartlands Point. It was between this pair at the opening bend. Huge trouble as well at that first bend. Delimit D in the red jacket, Baltimore Bay and Weatherman. Those three basically out of contention. And that left Canary Captain and Heartlands Point through and they battled it down the far straight. Very little between them, perhaps a length on occasions. Canary Captain led at that third bend made some progress as well between the closing two bends and off the final bend my word he really flew for home a truly smashing success for canary captain tell us about canary captain now this is six wins in six finals that's right um very very lucky dog i suppose not a lot of people can say you have a hundred percent record in finals it's a good record to have and hopefully it'll go on a bit longer john you're deeply involved with the healy family something like 10 or 12 dogs together this is a great win though here in y'all tonight was it unexpected well, it wasn't really unexpected because, you know, he is a very, very good dog. You know, it, it takes a very, very good dog to do the time he has done in Cork. And, you know, it's just, it's a funny, when a dog comes to track the first time, it takes a few runs to learn it, you know. And this dog, more so than a lot of other dogs, he takes one or two runs to learn it. And tonight he showed the difference in being around the track twice. He came out smartly, he did everything right. And when he does everything right, this dog, he's a definitely double-class dog. So we're hopeful that we'll be dreaming with bigger and better things, you know. I couldn't see any dog in Ireland really coming from behind them, even the great late late show, may I say. But you never know, I mean, it takes, when you go into the top grade, it takes, everything has to be right with the dog, everything has to go right with the dog, and it's been proved time and time over, you know, you just have to have your luck on your side too. The stands are packed, the bell sounds, one, Old Maid the favourite, two is Nimble Piper, three, Michael's Machine, four, Emmett Robert, five, Joyful Tidings, in 1994, the Irish Derby was won by Joyful Tidings and trained by Tralee farmer Donny Regan. 
It was a night that Donny's son, Pordrick, would always remember. And away they go, and Old Maid missed it, and bombing away was Michael's machine. Now fly right up. Joyful tidings in between them might just shade it, and Joyful tidings has hit the front. They're racing it's everyone's dream to win a derby, and especially when we're so far away from, from Dublin, it's hard to imagine that you could actually drive up and down and win. But they carried a special train to Dublin that night for the people going to the derby. So there was an extra carry throw there. So it made it more exciting on the night. Robert trying hard, but Joyful Tidings is going to win the Respond Derby. Joyful Tidings wins it in good style from... My father's father had dogs, and my mother's father had Patsy Lynch, a great dogs down through the years, years ago. As a matter of fact, the First Kingdom Cup in Tralee, he divided it back in 1917. Dhoni retired a few years after winning the derby, and Porrick took over the trainer's licence. However, Dhoni is always around to lend a helping hand. I start in the morning as, as early as I can, it's usually before seven, and here yeah, I let out the dogs, feed them, walk them. My father comes back usually around eight o'clock and we gallop them. And my sister is off now for the summer, and she's always around the weekend, so plenty help. There's a, a lovely gallop back near the, the beach. We gallop there most mornings, but like in the summertime it might get a bit hard, but uh, it's a lovely gallop and it's a fine long gallop and clean, very clean there. And you have it done in a couple of minutes, so it's handy. We walk them usually on the beach because the road out there is very busy and a lot of the fields now have electric fences and cattle in them and we're only two minutes from the strand so it's easy to put them in the van and take them out and walk them on the beach. And they like it, innit? it's good. Fresh air and fresh water under them. They love it. The biggest disadvantage down here is the travelling. We go to Tralee, is our local track, 12, 10, 10 or 12 miles in the road and then you have Limerick, Cork. But after that the rest of them are a bit far. But we do those tracks regular. Lucky enough this year, I have a few good dogs. Flashing away, he ran in the final of the Kennedy Cup, but he was barely drawn in the final, and he came off a bit sore in the hock. I left it, we left him off for a few weeks, but when I brought him back, he didn't seem to be showing the early pace that he was showing early on the year. So I said he had much business in the ledger, which we were looking forward to running him in the ledger. We decided to go to the Barry Sea then with him. I hadn't trialled him over the 700 yards, and I raced him over it, so I just took a chance but holding on, it's flashing away as they come into the home straight. It's flashing away now up towards the line. Lark Kildon is also there, but it's a win for flashing away. I bought him for a syndicate in Tralee. They were lucky enough for the dog before called one more stop. So I'm delighted they have this for league, you know. They're a great crowd. Hushman, he's belonged to a syndicate in Limerick. They had a bitch two years ago and they sold her at the sales. And the money they got, they bought this dog as a sapling. And he's done good times in Cork, 28-36, and he's done a 28-26 in the semi-final of the Kennedy Cup. But he was unlucky in the final. I think he was unlucky anyway, but not taken from the winner. Hopefully, before the year is out, he'll win something big, because the great crowd that own him as well. They love going to the track, they love the night house, and then they don't complain, thank God. <laughs> I have a dog running tonight in Tralee, Sasha's man. He looks a promising dog. We'll probably race him on towards the end of the year, but he's uh, shot a bit of early pace, but he has plenty of foot there. Over the last 10 years, no event has pulled in the crowds of the Tralee track like the benefit meeting for Tralee General Hospital, which took place last Friday at the Kingdom Greyhound Stadium. To date, the organisers have raised over 1 million euro for the hospital. The evening offered plenty of novelty events to entertain young and old alike. Join in fortune now for the final of the Kerry Group Tralee General Hospital 550. Well, the runners now on parade for the final of the Kerry Group Tralee General Hospital 550, winner €5,000. In one rich rascal, trained by Patsy O'Callaghan for John Carey in Kilrush, a son of Lark Hill Joe and Soviet Fire. In trap two, Carlton Blue, trained by Tony Fahey Jr. in Port Umna for Edward Fitzgerald in Ballyhorns, this a son of Carlton Bale and Sylvie's Ranto. In three, Sasha's man, trained by Paddy Regan for T.E. Deerling in Ballyhaig, this a son of Sinead Slaney and Bobby's Cottage. In four, Lena's Husky, owned and trained by Thomas O'Connor in Ballybegan, this a son of Band of Stars and Lena's Sally. In trap five, we have Jacquee Blues, owned and trained by John Moriarty in Tralee, a son of Honcho Classic and Treat Size. And completing the lineup is number six, Brian Seat, trained by Sean Keane for Thomas Gleason, a son of Concord Direct and Toby's Girl. They hair up behind traps. 
and they're away. Number five, Jacques Blue moving inwards, but he leads to the corner from number four. That's Linus Husky with number three, Sasha's man around the opening corners. Number five, Jacques Blue. Number three, Sasha's man forced to check in second. In third, number four, Linus Husky. But down the far side, Jacques Blue leads. Here comes number three, Sasha's man with a powerful dash into the third corner. He takes it up, Sasha's man. In second, number five, Jacques Blue just checking slightly. Further back, number four, Linus Husky finishing well. But around the final corner, it's number three, Sasha's man. Looks like landing this one for favourite backers. Number three, Sasha's man wins it. It's close for second between number six, Brian Seat, and number five, Jacques Blue. The winning time, 30 13. And a great victory there for Porter Gregan in the final of the Kerry Group Drilly General Hospital 550 with the favourite, Sasha's man. Second, number six, Brian Seat, and third, number five, Jacques Blue's. The winning time, 30 13. Great run because he was in a good bit of trouble at the start. He missed the break, but he finished great though. And like, he took on the five dog on the outside. So it, the time won't be great now, I'd say, but it's good as he done already. But once he won, I don't care. <laughs> so hopefully now, Dublin next. <laughs> Delightful. That's the only word I can say. Absolutely superb. But it's down to the trainer. And where did you get Sasha's man? On the introduction of. Patrick Reagan. He saw the dog running. I had a look at it. We agreed this had a bit of potential and it proved right. Another big race on the night was the Donkey Derby with Joe Haley's Knight of Argon, the hot favourite, who after almost knocking our cameraman to the ground, went on to win by a couple of lengths, in a much slower time than that of Sasha's man. Next was the Terrier race and the competition was much too slow for Jamie McMahon's Terrier, who has won this event for four years on the trot. Jamie McMahon, a grey hand in the making here. You seem to win this event quite often. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's easy when you think, think about it. Like, he's well taken care of, so he knows how to do uh, that job. Like. Organisers Michael Begley and Liam Brazel were very pleased with the turnout on the night. We're really delighted with it and we couldn't expect any more from the general public in Kerry. They've really responded to us. We hope to raise 100,000 and uh, it will go towards equipment in a high dependency unit in the hospital. We, we, we collect the money and they buy the instruments. In part two, we bring you news of the forthcoming benefit night at Cork, the quarter-final heats of the Irish Oaks, plus life's beauty's puppies. and District Association for the Handicapped have been running a benefit meeting at Curraheen Park in Cork for a number of years and this year is no exception. It is to take place on Thursday the 10th of July. The association was formed in 1968 and to date they have built a preschool, a holy family school which educates children up to 18 years old, a workshop for adults which includes arts and crafts, sewing rooms plus printing and trophies. Also the association have built a number of residential homes plus a retirement home and the latest development is called The Haven, which aims to assist adults with severe learning disabilities. Their main concern at the moment is to keep the respite centre open for longer hours, and the monies raised from the benefit night will go towards achieving this. One of the main figures in the association is Dr O'Donnell from Limerick. The single most important thing I think at this stage we're doing is respite care and home support. And to that end, the association has built a respite care house called Core Centre, and that's for, to give respite care to children. That can accommodate eight children at any given time, but unfortunately, due to lack of government funds, we can only open it part-time. We thank everybody who fundraised for us, and the very latest one, which is happening next Thursday night in Cork Greyhound Track, the Greyhound Benefit Meeting. That's on every year. Now, for the last few years, the money for that has gone towards the building of the Core Centre for respite care for children and they this year the same the decision has been made to give it towards the bill for building it and also towards the running costs of it and it would appear that the greyhound benefit meeting for the next number of years will hone in on that particular service this will be a tremendous social event as well as being a fundraising event and we would particularly appeal to everybody from the area to go to the dog track that night because Every person who goes, uh, we will get the proceeds of that. And I think, apart from that, it's a sociable night and a very happy night. So I would advise everybody, if you can at all, come along and we'll have a good night.
night's racing here at Shelburne Park tonight for the four quarterfinals of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks will run. By general consensus, this has been one of the best Oaks classics in many, many years. Tremendous greyhounds in contention. We start with the opening quarterfinal where Mustang Mega was the red hot favourite to win it, but strong rivals in the likes of Sign On Starlight, Patience Pays, Long Valley Tina, and Enjoy, and a certain bitch called Armani Pearl. The first quarterfinal in the Oaks, in trap one, Mustang Mega, two, Armani Pearl, three, Sign On Starlight, four, Patience Pays, five, Long Valley Tina, and six, Alan Joy. The favourite goes from one, Mustang Mega. Here behind traps. The first heat away to go. Mustang is out quite well. So is number four, Patience Pays. Into the corner. Mustang Meg on the inside from Patience Pays. Number two, Armani Pearl. Bursts through to second place. Challenges off to second bend. It's number two, Armani Pearl. Gone on from one. Mustang Mega down the back straight. Armani Pearl by half a length from Mustang Mega. Mustang gets back up the inside of the third bend. Takes it up again from two, Armani Pearl. Number six, Alan Joy on the premises. Here comes number five, Long Valley Tina. Off the final bend. It's Mustang Mega, number one, being challenged strongly again by two, Armani Pearl. Number three flies home in third, sign on Starlight, but it looks as though Mustang Mega has taken the first heat in a time of 28.79. Well, that was a real thriller there, Mustang Mega eventually getting home in front. On to the second heat, where Kilcrane Lass was a non-runner, leaving us with five runners. Axel Grease, the strong favourite here, and Lovely Dog was her main rival in the market. One, Odette. Two, Lovely Dog. Three, Ballybacoke Lady. Trap four is vacant. In five, Axel Grease. And in six, Mount Taylor Dolly. The red hot favourite Axel Grease goes from five. The hair behind the traps, away they go. She's out fast, Axel Grease, leading up at number two, Lovely Dog, going up very fast on the inside. And Lovely Dog clears the bend in front from five, Axel Grease in second. Six, Mount Taylor Dolly, producing big pace off the second bend. Heading down the far side, it's number two, Lovely Dog, with on the outside, number five, Axel Grease. In third, six, Mount Taylor Dolly, into the second last corner, and Lovely Dog still holding. But well, here comes Axel Grease on the outside. Number five, Axel Grease, heads it. Turning for home, Axel Grease takes it up from two lovely dog in second. Six Mount Taylor Dolly fading as number one Odette finishes fast. The time 28.63 and another impressive run from Axel Grease. The winner there trained of course by Ollie Bray. And Ollie was represented in the 30 too with Charity Mindy, but she wasn't one of the favourites for this one. The favourites being number two Alison's pet and six Miss Blue Eyes. One, Munsborough Lucky. Two, Alison's Pet. Three, Charity Mindy. Four, Lemon Sugar. Five, Euro Dream. And six, Miss Blue Eyes. The favourites are going from two and six as the hare comes up behind the traps. They're away in this third heat. Number three, Charity Mindy takes a flyer, leads to the corner from five, Euro Dream in second. Two, Alison's Pet going up well on the inside. A bit of a pile up there. Five is in trouble, Euro Dream. And now three, Charity Mindy has skipped clear. Five, six clear into the back from two, Alison's Pet and six, Miss Blue Eyes. Heading into the third bend, this number three, Charity Mindy, still out clear. A lead of five lengths. Two, Alison's Pet is beginning to inch closer. Six, Miss Blue Eyes is in third, and then one, Munsborough Lucky. But coming up the straight, it's number three out front, Charity Mindy, holding the big late run of number two, Alison's Pet, with six, Miss Blue Eyes back in third. The time is 28.89. So two winners on the night so far for Ollie Bray, and the big question was, could he complete a hat-trick for the third round in a row? He had both Spellbound, the very hot favourite, and Three Star Girl in lineup for the final heat, but things weren't going to go quite according to plan. One, one yard. Two, Airmount Liz. Three, Free State. Four, Count Again. Five, Three Star Girl. And six is Spellbound. Number six, Spellbound, the red hot favourite. The hair coming up behind traps. They're away for this final heat. The Spellbound not too well away. It's four count again leading up with number one going up fast on the inside one yard. Spellbound is turned over at the corner. Sensation here in this final heat of the Oaks. And now it's number one leads down the back. That's one yard from four count again. Five, three star girl making big ground on the outside. At the third bend, it's out front. Number one, one yard. Five, three star girl is closing in second. Four count again in third. But off the final bend, it's one, one yard in front. Being challenged by five, three star girl. Number four, count again runs on as well. But number one, one yard is the winner of this one in a brilliant time of 28.61. Things didn't quite work out for Spellbound, but the good news was she was fine afterwards and she'll be back again in the future. Her trainer, Ollie Bray, though, is very much represented. Three of the last 12, he could have more than one finalist yet, and who knows, the winner. His Axel Grease meets Mustang Mega. That's going to be the big race in the semi-finals. The second heat, Ollie has two runners in it, but Yon Yard looks to one here, with Long Valley Tina bidding to reach the final again for a second time. It promises to be a great night's racing at Shelburne on Saturday.
2002 Paddy Power Irish Derby final about to start. The hair behind the traps are away to go. A number five drive past by ways away. Well, the son of Spire Nikita and Sandy Penny, up by Michael Carney, trained by Ali Bray. He's won the derby. The hair comes up behind the traps, ready for the off, and away to go. And it's Life's Beauty from four. She's leading up from number two on the inside and one, but it's Life's Beauty goes around the bend in front. Last year's Derby winner, Bypass Byway, retired to stud shortly after his great victory and was mated with the 2002 Oaks winner, Life's Beauty, who recently produced four pups, much to the delight of owner Larry Byrne. But Life's Beauty has won the Oaks! Basically, as you can see, Life's Beauty has been retired for the breeding paddocks and um, I think that I'll have to leave her that way because um, her injury in her wrist has come back to her and really at, at she's reached her time anyway to have her babies. Um, her pups are very good looking pups. I'm very fond of them. I think that they're beautiful really and uh, hopefully she'll be able to breed something that will be equal or better than herself. Now we've given her a reasonable chance to bypass by way. Um, nobody knows for sure what one will end up with at the end of the day but um, you have to take your chance in life and go for it. So um, into the future, hopefully, we'll be back in Shelburne Park with one of them or maybe two of them. Um, one is never shown sure the breeding game if you can make it or not. Like, you know, a great bitch you don't always breed great dogs. But fortunately, I think that this bitch comes from a great line of dogs. Um, two derby winners have came out of the line the last 10, 12 years. Um, Manx Treasure and Bahis Rocket came out of the line. They were superb dogs. Bahis Spirit came out of the line. And these are really top class Greyhounds early pace. So hopefully that this bitch, because of her breeding, because she's by a super sire, now for a really good road bitch, that we may be able to emulate that. And hopefully I'll be back for next year's Oaks with uh, Life's Beauty's sisters. And OK, we haven't brought them to the track, but they have developed out into very fine greyhounds. In fact, very beautiful greyhounds. So that is a dream that we may get back someday to at least compete in the competition. And, uh, well, you never know, make the final. It's, um, it's really it's a lottery the dog game, and you, you're never quite sure what you're going to get at the end of the day. You may have the goods and you may not have the luck. I was fortunate I had the goods and I had the luck. And if you get both of them at the same time, well, life's a doddle, really. We'll take a look ahead to the fixtures now, and on Thursday it's the semi-finals of the Leinster Champion Puppy Stake at Ennis Gorthy. Cork hosts a benefit meeting for the Charville and District Association for the Handicapped. Then on Friday at Harold's Cross it's the final of the Multibet Tri Distance, the second round of the Cox Cup at Newbridge, while at Longford it's the semi-finals of the Bruce Betting Longford Derby. On Saturday it's the semi-finals of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks at Shelburne Park, plus the Cashman's 575 gets underway at Cork. And on Sunday, it's the second round of the Northwest Derby at Lifford. Next week, we bring you all the action from that benefit night in Cork. Highlights from the Cox Cup, plus the semi-finals of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks.